The base fabric you choose for your embroidery project is a big factor in how easy it is to stitch and how your finished project is gonna turn out. Today, I will help you learn how to choose fabric for your next embroidery project. Welcome to EBITDA Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pajagi, and embroidery. One of the nice things about embroidery is that it can be done on almost anything. I've done embroidery on many different kinds of fabric and even paper and wood. But this can also be overwhelming to somebody who's a beginner. How do you know what to stitch on and which one is going to be easier? Before you decide what fabric you're going to embroider on, first you need to know what you're talking about when you say embroidery. The broad term embroidery means any kind of embellishment with thread on a base material. But there are many different types of embroidery and different types of embroidery need different types of base fabric. The two main categories of embroidery are counted thread and surface embroidery. Counted thread embroidery is embroidery where your stitches are actually based on the threads in the fabric that you're working on. This includes things like cross stitch, hard anger, needlepoint, bargello, things like that. And these embroidery styles are normally worked from a chart. Surface embroidery is made of embroidery where stitches are worked on top of the fabric. So often there are lines drawn or printed on the fabric and you follow these with your stitches. This could include things like cruel embroidery, stump work, gold work, freestyle embroidery. If you learned basic embroidery stitches like backstitch and lazy daisy as a child in guides or scouts or something like that, it was probably surface embroidery. Here are some of the common types of fabrics and the type of embroidery that they are suited to. Even weave fabrics like Ada cloth are great for counted thread embroidery. They're a good option for beginners because they're economical and they can come in almost any color. Technically, you could use these for surface embroidery, but I don't recommend it unless you happen to be embellishing a cross stitch piece because they're not the easiest option that you have to work with. Ada cloth is designed primarily for cross stitch. It comes in a variety of counts. You can get almost any size you need, whether you want to make a small necklace pendant or a large table runner. Hardanger fabric is similar to Ada cloth and is commonly used in hardanger embroidery. Canvases are another foundation that is great for counted thread embroidery and not good for surface embroidery. There are many different types of canvas, including plastic, but the distinguishing feature of a canvas is that it is fairly stiff and the holes are quite large. Canvas is used in many forms of counted thread embroidery, especially needlepoint and bargello. Sometimes you can get it printed with a design to stitch. Plastic canvas has rigidity so that it doesn't require a hoop or a frame. It is often used for three-dimensional projects like boxes or cups, and it's a perfect choice for beginners or for those with dexterity or vision challenges. Cotton is a great option for surface embroidery. It can't be used for counted thread embroidery because the weave is too small. Cotton is a nice choice for beginners or experienced embroiders, and it is available in any color or pattern you can imagine. And it works well with six strand embroidery floss, which is a perfect thread choice for beginners. Try to use a cotton that has a bit of weight to it and it feels pretty sturdy in your hands. If it is too thin and flimsy, then the stitches might pull the fabric and you might be able to see them through the fabric. Occasionally, like if you're trying shadow work, then this is an effect that you want, but usually you don't want to be able to see the back of your stitches through the fabric. Linen is a great option for either kind of embroidery. Heavier weight linens with an even weave are perfect for counted thread embroidery, 
and lightweight linens are really great for surface embroidery. If you are going to use it for counted thread embroidery, be sure to check that it does have an even weave. Warp and weft threads should be the same size and distance apart so that four threads down and four threads across makes a square and not a rectangle. The main problem with linen is the cost and color availability. That is why a lot of embroiderers prefer cotton. Like 100% cotton fabric, poly cotton blends are also great for embroidery. Some fabric purists will say that you always have to use 100% natural fibers, but it's really up to you. Use your own values, goals, skills, and budget to determine what fabric you use. If you are a beginner, just practicing, or have limited resources, poly cotton can be a great choice. Knits are not a great option for any kind of embroidery because of the stretch that they have. You can use it for surface embroidery, but you can't ever use it for counted thread embroidery because there's no weave structure to base your stitches on. The most common type of embroidery on knits is adding embellishment to ready-made garments. To do this, you will wanna add interfacing or stabilizer to help support your stitches. Just keep in mind that the area with the stitching will no longer have the same stretch as the original knit. So if you are stitching in an area like a neckline, be sure you can still get it over your head. There are a lot of other specialty materials you can do embroidery on, such as leather, silk, plastic, even paper or wood. If you want to experiment with these, look for project specific instructions and tips to help you with these different materials. The more you get into the world of embroidery, the more options you will discover. No matter what fabric you choose, the important thing to remember is the embroidery triad. It's the combination of fabric, thread, and needle that go together. If you are having problems, it might not be that you have a bad fabric, it's just a bad fabric needle thread combination and maybe trading out one of the other things will fix your problems. Just have fun while you are learning. Don't expect immediate perfection, just relax and enjoy the process. For more ideas, tips and tutorials, check out my website, ebitastudio.com.